In what has become traditional practice, the Victorian government released a massive dump of over 240 annual reports and reviews a couple of weeks back. The annual dump is the go-to strategy for any government whose intention is to try and avoid scrutiny while making the job of journalists as difficult as possible. While it's a pretty shady practice and deserves to be called out, it's not actually the reason I made this video. Back when I was looking at the federal government's visionary Housing Australia Future Fund, I got to looking at a similarly impressive sounding announcement from the Victorian government three years ago. Victoria's big housing build. Announced just over three years ago now, in November 2020, the big housing build launched with a lot of high-vis, fanfare and an impressive-looking dollar figure attached. The budget also includes the $5.3 billion allocated for 12,000 new social housing units. $5.3 billion. The media release had a lot of numbers in it, but the key promise was that the $5.3 billion would deliver 12,000 new homes throughout metro and regional Victoria within four years. Of those 12,000 homes, the Victorian government promised 9,300 social housing homes, or an increase to the state's social housing supply of 10% within just four years. Now, uh, we're here at uh, Dunlop Avenue, yes, Dunlop Avenue, Dunlop Avenue uh, in Ascot Vale, uh, to mark a really significant milestone in our big housing build. $5.3 billion in new money provided in last year's budget. That's on top of more than a billion dollars that we'd already committed to invest, both in terms of maintenance and new build at the election in 2018. Uh, this is more than 12,000 extra units, so new units, an increase of 10% fully on the total social and affordable uh, and public housing stock, if you like. This is more money than has been spent by any government state or federal in the history of our nation to boost public, social and affordable housing. The reality is that despite the big announcements, the amount of social housing stock in Victoria has barely shifted. Looking back over the last nine years worth of data, the total number of social housing stock has fluctuated plus or minus around 1,000 homes. In the 2017-18 reporting period, there are 86,813 social housing homes. In 2022-23, there are 88,189, or a net increase of 1,376 homes. It's better than a decrease, I guess, but to put it into some relevant context, as at the 31st of March 2018, there were 44,028 applications on the Victorian Housing Register. This is people looking for social housing. As of June 2023, that figure had grown to 65,195, or an increase of roughly 45%. It's pretty obvious to see there that the amount of social housing stock has not been able to keep pace with demand. Often these units are smaller than what is being destroyed and so less likely to be able to house whole families. And so what we see is families being pushed out of the city. Now to be fair, with less than 12 months left, there's always the chance that the Victorian government will come home with a wet sail on its promise for the big housing build to increase social housing by 10%. I'm just saying that given what we've seen so far, it's probably going to take some creative accounting to get there. The fact that the big housing build is struggling to deliver shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone. Not long after the big housing build announcement in 2020, RMIT Centre for Urban Research and Sustainability and Urban Planning released a report that essentially outlined that the planning behind the big housing build was not necessarily going to return the best bang for buck. That is, I guess, if you choose to measure bang for buck in terms of the number of homes delivered and not dollars in developers' pockets. RMIT's analysis found that direct capital investment using public land would deliver approximately 20,000 homes for the same cost, with the asset, e.g. land plus housing, remaining in public ownership delivering reduced costs in other government funded areas as well. But given the Victorian government's apparent love for selling off public stuff, the direct capital investment route was always an unlikely option. If the Victorian Labor government wants to sell off public housing land in the inner city to private developers. Developers stand to make big profits, but public housing residents stand to lose out. Now, Liberal governments have long looked at inner city public housing land and seen dollar signs. We expect that, but Labor should be better. And if Labor sells this public land, we will never get it back. That'll never happen. We will demolish those towers and build something infinitely better. More than 40 public housing towers across Melbourne on the chopping block. Damn it! For anyone paying attention, it's no real surprise to learn that the big housing build has so far barely made a dent in the state's social housing supply problem. Old homes have been demolished while new ones are being built, meaning the overall net gain is minimal. In an article in The Guardian, Libby Porter, a professor at RMIT's Centre for Urban Research, points to the example of six sites that were also highlighted in RMIT's 
Australia's 2020 report. Five of these six sites across Ascot Vale, Flemington, Hawthorne and Heidelberg had previously been public housing estates. Prior to demolition, they were made up of predominantly public housing units, but thanks to the big housing build, they've been replaced with a mix of private and social housing units. So as Professor Porter said, it's a total net gain of 54 social housing dwellings across six sites at the cost to the public of $532 million, which is $9.85 million per dwelling. Again, there's a lot of numbers mentioned here, but it's important to remember that failure to take sufficient action has real-world consequences that impact real people. Consider this sobering example. In 2018, the average waiting time for public rental housing for those clients who have received priority access housing allocation was 10.5 months. That's a long time for someone sitting on a priority list. In 2018, the average waiting time for public rental housing for clients who have received a priority access housing or priority transfer allocation due to family violence was 8.8 months. I can only imagine that 8.8 months would feel like an absolute eternity for anyone in that situation. We'll now skip forward to 2023 and the average waiting time for public rental housing for those clients who have received priority access housing allocation is 18.1 months. That's a year and a half. But it gets worse. In 2023, the average waiting time for public rental housing for clients who have received a priority access housing or priority transfer allocation due to family violence was 23.6 months. Let's round that up to two years. That's right, in Victoria, the average wait time for public rental housing for someone that's on the priority list because of family violence is two years. If 8.8 months felt like an eternity five years ago, what do you think a two-year wait feels like now? Victoria's big housing build got a shout out in CFMEU National Secretary Zach Smith's address to the National Press Club earlier this year. While he pitched a far more ambitious strategy than anything the federal or state governments have come up with so far. Victoria has the big housing build program. Queensland has the housing investment fund. There's the Together Home Transition Program in New South Wales and the growing and renewing public housing program right here in the ACT. And these are all worthy, positive initiatives. But let's get this clear. They are nowhere near sufficient to close the gap. Given the importance of this problem, we are being way too timid. And I think all of us here know that. Those words have really stuck with me since I first heard them. Given the scale of the problem and the rate of deterioration, how could anyone possibly argue against that point? If nothing else, the Victorian example illustrates just how long and how much money it takes to shift the dial on social housing, even when that dial shift is only a relatively small one. If this is what $5.3 billion can deliver over four years in one state, you can probably imagine how far the annual $500 million disbursement from the Housing Australia Future Fund is going to go. Spoiler alert. Uh, not far at all. 